We have uh, a deep scientific and technical base at the laboratory, and from that we have a set of more holistic capabilities that we, that we rely on to do our mission work. And in this case, uh, our abilities in modeling and simulation, in sensor systems, in high reliability engineering, in safety and risk analysis, we think are all quite relevant to the types of technical uh, advances that will be necessary to combat climate change. More specifically, we have uh, great depth in renewable energy, in geosciences, in um, sensing systems. So Sandia has worked in the geosciences for over 50 years as a national lab. It is focused on research and development that industry can't do. Our, our role is to complement the work that industry does, to work on novel R&D and then to collaborate with industry, to collaborate with academia, to try to transition that out to get it commercialized and deployed. Climate change is driving a set of very important environmental impacts that's well established by the science now. Extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity, uh, precipitation patterns are changing, droughts are occurring more frequently, wildfires more extensively. And those are driving a set of societal impacts. For us to be successful in tackling climate change, decarbonization is an imperative. Transitioning to clean energy sources is, is critical. Geothermal will play a big role going forward. Geothermal, other than the drilling completion stimulation phases, is essentially you know, a renewable resource, right? It's the heat beneath our feet. So the more we can do to access and diversify different forms of energy, Right, gives us, a, I think, a more stable grid. So Sandia's got a rich history in the earth sciences, studying the subsurface. So geothermal reservoirs are just an extension of some of these things that Sandia has already worked on, problems they've already solved. So what you're looking at here is a lab scale version of a energetic experiment where we're trying to see the effect of explosives interacting with, in this case, a, a surrogate rock. This is a, a PMMA, a clear plastic. We detonated a, a very small source in here, and so we've got this very cool fracture network. But what's important about this fracture network is it lets us understand the physics of how the fracture network is created, how damage is induced, and how we can use that for geothermal wells. Sandia has been involved in geothermal for decades, and we have really leveraged a lot of the technologies development that we create or the expertise that we have developed uh, through different programs and really capitalize them and use them for geothermal technology development. Sandia Geothermal Department fashions itself as a is the place to go to for uh, harsh access in subsurface environments. It's about the mid-2000s we were working on a project we were trying to get to a, a, a resource really quickly and we focused a lot on uh, using percussive hammers. Uh, percussive hammers are largely used in mining and construction, not so much in geothermal. So one of the, the things that came out of that effort was that we thought we could help to expand uh, capabilities in geothermal. And uh, one of the things that was uh, part of Sandia's effort was to develop the test capability to validate and verify the performance of the percussive hammers at high temperature. But one of the drawbacks for using them is that they require uh, lubrication or conventional oil lubrication. And under the temperatures that we envision operating at for geothermal, that lubrication breaks down and you have to find an alternate way to provide that same capability. How do we reduce the, the, the risk um, and the cost of exploration for geothermal? The area that, that we can contribute the most is really about accessing and understanding what, what the subsurface looks like. A natural follow-on to the percussive hammer work was what we currently call our micro-hole drilling. So uh, the notion of drilling smaller holes for either exploration or monitoring is, uh, is it's been well established. The idea behind the micro hole is that it's cheap, it's fast, it's easily mobilizable. And one of the things that we wanted to do was try to expand the capabilities of micro holes to geothermal to help lower the cost of either exploration or monitoring in geothermal.